Once you have use cases and an architecture defined, you need to get from use cases to sequence diagrams to complete high-level design. Let's take a look at how the pieces fit together. First, there are use cases. A use case diagram shows the types of interactions in a system. Each system has multiple use cases, which each correspond to a different way to interact with the system. In this example, use case number one is inserting a coin into a soda machine. For each use case, one or more scenarios are defined. A scenario is a specific variant of a use case that provides more detail. For example, you might have inserting a coin to add money, or there might be a use case where an extra coin beyond what is necessary is inserted. While that is not desired behavior, a customer might do it, and the machine should do better than simply eating the coin. And there might be other scenarios as well, all of which have to do with inserting a coin into a soda machine. Each scenario has preconditions, a scenario description, and post conditions. Scenarios are typically written in structured English language plain text. Once you've defined the scenarios, each scenario is translated directly into a sequence diagram. The sequence diagram also has preconditions, a number of actions, and post conditions. Translating to a sequence diagram typically involves going from a fairly generic set of steps and scenarios, step one, step two, step three, to much more precise descriptions of which object is sending what information to what other object. Typically, there's one sequence diagram per scenario, but many scenarios per use case and many use cases for the system. Therefore, you'll end up with a big pile of sequence diagrams at the end. The next step in detail design is to convert those to state charts. We'll take a look at how that happens to make the link more explicit.